Thanks for listening to Entre Nido, the show where we help you live the Nido life. By listening to Entre Nido, you'll learn how to develop multiple streams of income. You'll hear amazing stories and takeaways from professionals in their field. And you'll learn more about yourself and how you're wired. The average person spends 90,000 hours at work in their lifetime. Student loan debt is at an all-time high, and 41% of all divorce is based on finances. If you feel like you're surviving, but you wouldn't exactly say you're thriving, then you've come to the right place. Whatever stage of life you're in, Entre Nido is here to help you be a better entrepreneur. Break out of that rat race and start living your Nido life today. And now introducing your Nido host, Matt Neff. Welcome back to Entre Nido. On the show today, we have dropship expert Anton Crayley. Hey everyone, welcome back to Entrenito. I am your host, Matt Neff. So glad you're listening in. You know, in life, there are many different fears that we all have. Some are afraid of spiders. Some people are afraid of snakes or heights or public speaking. I have a fear that's actually pretty legit, and it's this. It's the fear of parallel parking. Our guest today actually had at one time a cookie delivery service, and he drove a huge truck on the streets of downtown New York City, Manhattan, and he would have to deliver cookies with a gigantic truck and find a parking space and navigate the traffic. Just talking about it makes me nervous, makes me anxious. Uh, but we're not going to leave him there. He actually goes on and explains his story today of how he went from that to having a thriving dropship business, e commerce business. And he shares the three keys needed to start up a thriving dropship business. For more information on Anton, make sure you check out dropshiplifestyle.com. That's dropshiplifestyle.com for all the information there. So we're going to be talking today about Shopify, how to create it, what products do you need, how do you get started. It's going to be a lot of fun. Also, I want to mention a great book I finished called Primary Greatness by the late Stephen R. Covey. There's some awesome takeaways in that will help you be even more successful with people. Make sure you pick up a copy by clicking on the show notes in this episode. And as always, thank you for taking time to listen to today's episode. Make sure you comment, rate, and subscribe. And please, we would love it if you left us a written review on iTunes or check out our Patreon page as well. We have people supporting us anywhere from a dollar a month to a hundred dollars a month. It would be such a huge help to us to help us do even more as a podcast. Thank you again for listening. And that's all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoy this interview with Anton Crayley. Welcome back to Entre Nido. My guest today is Anton Crayley. Anton, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Doing well, Matt. Thanks for having me on. Before we get into today's topic, we're going to be talking about how to build a lifestyle business with Shopify. I have heard of Shopify, but that's about it. So I'm super excited to learn new things. I know our audiences as well. If some may have Shopify businesses right now, maybe not know anything about it. Regardless, I'm, I'm glad you're here. I'm, I'm excited to hear more about it. Before we jump in, would you please promote away anything you want to share? Uh, social media, websites, products, services, anything like that? Sure. Yeah. If, uh, if anybody's interested in our conversation today, wants to learn more about what I do, uh, the best place would be to go to my main website, which is dropshiplifestyle.com. Uh, again, dropshiplifestyle.com. There we have videos, a podcast, everything linked up straight off there. Perfect. So I would love to know kind of this is the first time I've ever talked to you. So this is always fun to learn and get to meet new people, but I'd love to hear your backstory, kind of how you got started and what you're doing now and, and what's worked for you over the past so many years. Sure. Yeah. So I'm i I'm 33 years old right now and I've been in e-commerce now since way back in, uh, in 2007. So basically since uh, a year after I got out of school, kind of got into e-commerce early on. Um, before that, though, the, the year before in my work experience, I was actually um, running a delivery route for a bakery in Brooklyn, New York, um, from Long Island, went to school upstate New York, SUNY Albany, graduated, wanted to get in business. This was before I knew about e-commerce at all. And basically what I did was buy the cheapest business I could find for sale through a broker, which is not the best idea, but <laughs> I spent $25,000 yeah, on a delivery route for a bakery in Brooklyn, New York. Basically, I would drive to Brooklyn every day, fill up a truck with cookies, drive back to Long Island and sell them wholesale to grocery stores. Wow. So did that for yeah, a few months and then got really lucky. Uh, the book, The 4-Hour Workweek came out. Um, one of my buddies introduced it to me. I read it like in a night and I was like, you know what? I think I can make an e-commerce site and sell cookies instead of driving to Brooklyn every day. Wow. So I spent a weekend in a library, put together my first website. And from there, I just have kept building. Wow, that's amazing. So what is it like? I'm intrigued. I've been to New York City a couple times in that area. And 
parking and traffic can be insane. What is it like? That sounds like a nightmare. It's, it's the worst. Yeah, no, it's, it's one of the worst <laughs> things ever. So, um, you know, driving, it doesn't matter what time. Like I would try to go in to the bakery three times a week. So I would drive on the BQE. It's the Brooklyn Queens Expressway. Uh-huh. And a, a ride that was probably 15 miles, even at 4 a.m. could take, you know, an hour and a half. Just oh. it's, it's crazy. And there there oh. is no time that there's not a rush hour because people are just always trying to beat it and you can't. So you have oh. that and then you get there. And then you, like you said, double park, have people yell at you, uh, you know, get what you have to get done and then sit in traffic again to get back. And um, what's crazy is, yeah, I lasted with that for, I probably did it for like a total of six months or so until the, the e-commerce site took off. Mm. But I, I, I just, I can't picture because, you know, my buddies that I grew up with, they do that every day to get to the city for work. And that's, you know, 13 years ago now. So wow. yeah, it's a, it's a different type of life. So where did that come from? Was it the was it the stress of the job that kind of forced you out of the nest to like be like this is insane? I got to do something different. Or do you? Are, or is your mind already wired like that? Did you have other hustles? Because that's pretty that's pretty amazing that you would come to that in six months. Yeah, I, I mean, I was definitely wired to know. I knew I was going to be an entrepreneur. I knew I would build some type of business. I have a, an uncle that's successful in business, and he just was kind of like you know, I guess you can call him a mentor and no one, I, I mean, I spoke with him probably two or three times a year and still do, mm-hmm. but I, I saw what he did and I thought, okay, I, I, I'm not going to have the same business, but I want to be an entrepreneur. I want that lifestyle. So the, the delivery business, I, literally the reason I bought that was because it was the cheapest one I could find. Mm-hmm. And my plan was to build it up over maybe a year, try to double the size of it, flip it, then buy another business, build it up, flip it. Like that was my, my business plan. It's great. Um, it just kind of, I, I, I fell into e-commerce because that book, uh, you know, it had like a chapter or two that you could build a Yahoo store, which was the e-commerce platform that was great back then. And it talked about using Google AdWords. And I was like, whoa, I don't need to be some tech guy. I don't need to be some genius. I could just make a website. Let me try this. And that just totally changed. As soon as sales started coming in online, I thought, okay, I'm not going this offline route. I'm not getting into opening different franchises like my original plan was. I thought I am in online business. I'm an e-commerce person. I'm going to get better at this. And that's what I focused on since then. That's great hustle. And that's a great mindset to have. Like you're working kind of at the end in mind and working your way back. That's that's great, man. Kudos to you. That is super helpful to kind of set up today what we're talking about. Um, what we talked about earlier was how to build a lifestyle business with Shopify. So I would love to learn more about it. Sure. Yeah. So Shopify is, they're hands down the best e-commerce platform. Uh, Basically what they allow you to do is make an e-commerce store. So a store that sells products online, Uh, they power the back end of your site. So how you can accept money from customers, how you would upload products, how would you design your website? They allow you to do that. And then they also design like the front end of it. So somebody goes to yourstore.com and what they see is the site that you built in the admin panel of Shopify. So that's what it is. It's a platform. Uh, You know, you can use it to build something that nobody ever sees, or you can use it to build one of the e- biggest e-commerce companies in the world. Um, like the, the Kylie Jenner cosmetics, right? Mm-hmm. Multi-billion dollar business is built on that platform. So you could basically do whatever you want with it. Um, if anybody wants to get into e-commerce or even now, if anybody's listening and they're in e-commerce, but maybe they don't use Shopify or have, you know, cause maybe they're like in an older platform or in a legacy platform, um, Shopify, just their hands down the best, especially for what we do, which is focus on the lifestyle side of building businesses, Mm -hmm. meaning trying to build something that can get us the biggest return with the smallest amount of effort. So another takeaway from the the four hour work week, right? But uh, (laughs) what's great about Shopify as a platform is automation is basically built in. So we have things like when orders come in our websites, we don't actually have to manually process them. They automatically get sent to the correct supplier. So the supplier can automatically ship it to the customer. So all different types of things like that, where it used to take employees, and virtual assistance and expensive technology. Now for $29 a month, you can do it with Shopify. That's amazing. And Shopify is really scalable too, isn't it? Regardless if you're just getting started to, like you said, Kelly Jenner stuff. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And businesses cool. of any side, even like the, the Tesla store, uh, they're on Shopify. So yeah, wow. you can do as small as you want or as big as you want. And um, they just, yeah, they're, they're the best. So the thing that really makes it attractive to someone trying to build either something as a side hustle or as a lifestyle business is the fact that, you know, again, they take care of the tech. And then for like the product side, you know, if people are thinking, well, what am I going to sell? What we do is focus on drop shipping 
meaning that we basically are online retailers. So we list products for sale on our stores, but we don't see the products. We don't touch them. They're not in our warehouses. Right. They're in warehouses from other brands that make them. And then those brands don't sell to the public. So we basically are a retail outlet for them. People buy from us, then those companies fulfill the orders. So there's definitely work involved. It's a real business, but it is very hands-off compared to what e-commerce looked like even a decade ago. So let's like break this down to the cellular level as far as like me. So what would I, what would my first step be? Like to find a product or something that I'm interested in or that's selling good or, okay, so find a product, okay. A, a product type. So what we like to do is just find different categories and then try to become an authority in that category. So hmm. um, let's say right now, like, if I wanted to give you an example, I am standing at my stand-up desk. And let's say I said, okay, you know what? We should build a stand-up desk store. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't be a website that sold one stand-up desk. And it wouldn't be a website that sold stand-up desks and office chairs and outdoor furniture. It would be a website that was the authority on stand-up desks. If 20 different brands made them, we would want to sell for 20 different brands. If there was 500 different color combinations and sizes, we would want to list all 500 of them. Wow. And uh, that's really the first step, identifying what product type you want to get into. Okay. Um, like you said, like, oh, should it be something that I'm interested in? Not really. It doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. The goal is to find something where the price point is high. Uh, for me, it's ideally over two hundred dollars. Okay, should be closer to a thousand, but anything over two hundred dollars, average retail price is okay. And then you also want to find a product type where customers don't already have brand loyalty. So, like the stand-up desk, when I bought this, I didn't know. You know, there's not like an apple of stand-up desks that popped into my head. So right. you want to find product categories like that, and that's really the first step. That is awesome. And it's bigger. You want a bigger ticket items because there's more return investment, things like that. Yeah. And going back to the lifestyle business, when I did the, the cookies, when I was selling cookies online, my yeah. first ever store, yeah. we had so many orders coming in and it was great and it made money. But every time an order came in for $15 after the price of you know goods, the cost of goods and price of shipping, I was making like $4 a sale. And mm. it's very hard to scale when you're making $4 every time you get an order because there's just so many customers and so much volume. Yeah. So what I eventually realized is, hey, if I could sell something for $1,000 and make $300 profit, you know, I can get one sale a day from a store and be very happy with that. So that's the mindset. Sell less products at higher prices and make more money. So you've sold off the cookie side of it. What are some other products and things that you work with? Yeah, so basically all different types of home goods. So you know, things from chandeliers to sofas, to you know, exhaust vents, um, really B two B like refrigerators, um, anything that falls into the price category where people don't care who it comes from, um, you know, you could make it work. From horse saddles to car rims to you know smokers for the backyard. There's just like, there's a lot of different products, but those, those are the main things, something that there's not brand loyalty, something where the price is high. And the other piece of criteria that we do look for is something that appeals to the upper middle class. Um, we don't like to sell to people that are actually like ultra wealthy because it's a lot harder and there's a lot more interaction. And also if people are spending like their last dollars with you, it's a, uh, it's a lot harder to get a sale and it's only based on price. So um, if you could find something that, that meets those three pieces of criteria, you're, you're probably looking good. That is super helpful. That's, that's interesting. It's got my mind reeling as far as like different products, things like that. Cause I, I have, uh, I enjoy the selling part of it. Like I grew up as like a huge Nintendo fan. So I love like video games, things like that. Like I'm a child of the eighties, I'm 39. And so for me, I've always been like, you know, you entertain this, like, oh, what if I had a brick and mortar uh, video game store? Yep. And, I, and I had a friend that had three video game stores. And one day he told me that the stores are just nets to get all of the material, all of the products. And then he sells them on Amazon, sells them online. And I thought, that's yep. unbelievable. It was not that it was like a sham or like a fake business. It was totally no, a legit no. business. But I was like, what a brilliant idea. I never thought of it that way. Like you get all the best stuff, sort through it and then sell it online. Like that's it's funny. And that, yeah, that's how I think of it. Like the future of retail, right? Like what retail is going to look like with offline retail stores. Yep. I, I think kind of what your, your friend is doing, like that's what it is. Even um, you look like, you know, I, I usually spend the summers in, in Manhattan mm -hmm. and like walking around and seeing how many stores are out of business. It's insane. Like almost everything is, is gone, even in like some of the, you know, nicest areas. But then the stores that are there are the stores that are almost, yeah, like fronts. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the company Peloton, they do the exercise bikes. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, they have showrooms all over Manhattan where you can go in, take free classes, and basically demo their stuff. But like that's what retail is now. These kind of like smaller areas that are servicing different purposes rather than just, hey, walk in and buy this. Because that's a very hard way to make money with e-commerce where it is right now. Yeah, that's so true. And it's fun to flip stuff. Like back in the day, like I would oh, definitely. Uh, get yeah. stuff from a garage sale for a quarter and sell for you know $30 or something. That's so cool. So what are some, what are some other takeaways and some things we need to keep in mind when we're, we're setting this up? Yeah, a big thing is, um, you know, basically, where are you going to sell your products? Like how you I should say how you're gonna get traffic to your products, how you gonna get buyers? Sure. So we use Shopify to build the stores. But that would be the same if people maybe are familiar with like WordPress instead, that would be the same as making a blog. And then just thinking like, I hope people find it. So you need to promote like crazy to get people to find you. And uh, the way that that we do it, our, our favorite way to do it is by using an advertising channel called Google Shopping. Okay. And if anybody goes to google.com and types in any product name, what they'll see is the normal search results, but then they'll see on the right uh, product images. And then under those images, there'll be prices. And under that, there'll be store names. And those are advertising units that we can pay to, to advertise on. And that's called Google Shopping Ads. And for what we do for e-commerce, specifically the, the higher ticket products, they work the best because by the time people see them, they're searching for what they want. And we're just saying, hey, here's an image of it. Here's the price. Here's our store. Do you want it? And if they click that, they go to our website. So that's um, if anybody is you know, try, trying this currently or thinking of getting into it, I would say instead of trying to use Facebook ads like everybody thinks is the golden ticket mm -hmm. for e-commerce, Google shopping is, is where the, the easiest money is to make. That's interesting. You mentioned the image. So that's probably very important too. Does that help mm -hmm. with selling? Like if it's, if it's just text to people think like, oh, is this legit? Is this a shady? Yeah. Well, and, and not just that, but when, you know, when we see like as, as somebody, as a user of Google, if you just search for something, let's say like, I don't know, chandeliers, if I searched for chandeliers and there was a, a text ad, which is the normal Google advertising unit. Mm -hmm. And it said something like, you know, buy chandeliers at chandeliers.com, whatever like that, mm -hmm. then, okay, that's cool. But like, that's easy for me to glance over. But then if on the right of the screen, I saw an image of a chandelier that actually looked just like what I want. And I saw a price under it. If I click that one, I am much more likely to be a customer. Um, you know, sure. and I'm much more likely to click it too. So yeah, the, the images and the price um, really help the, the person searching on Google kind of self-identify as a buyer. Like if they click that, that's a very good lead to your website. Mm, that's really cool. Yeah, it's I love these like little things because I've done that before. I've done that. I've typed in a product I'm looking for and I'll, I'll click on the shopping tab and then I'll see all the listed stores that may have it or like, yeah. oh, or Target or this place has it for sale or I didn't realize this one had a sale because that's a big thing too. I love, there's a uh, there's an app called Slick Deals and uh, I, I, I'm on that all the time. And I find like I'm getting stuff for free. I'm getting Kindle books that are 15 bucks for $1.99. And so I'm constantly scrolling through there. So it's got me kind of that mindset of like online. It's amazing what online shopping has done and how it's changed our economy. Oh, completely. And it's, I think it's still only just getting started. So yeah. Yeah. Like Black Friday, like my, my wife and her mom would always go out Black Friday shopping, you know, like in the late 90s and 2000s was like the thing to do. But then like Amazon comes along. And I'm like, what I love about it is I don't have to get up at 5 a.m. and stand in line. I can buy what I want through Amazon or whatever that's having a sale, the same sale at the store that is online. And I'm like, and it gets shipped to my house and I can stay in my pajamas. That's it's And it, yeah, it's like changed our <laughs> patience levels too. Like even when my wife wants to go to different stores and go shopping for stuff, I just don't want to go anymore. Cause I'm like, well, I can, I can <laughs> tap a few buttons. It'll be here in two days. And I know, you know I don't deal with lines and uh, slowness. <laughs> I know. And that's like the, it's really for dudes. Like, you know, guys yeah, like yes, to, yes. Like, they're not, they don't want to look at and touch everything in the whole mall and go no. into every store. They're like, let's go. I want to get a pretzel and, or a Starbucks and I want to get right. some, I know exactly what I want and I'm going to see how fast I can get in and get out. That's yeah, exactly. how I the typical I don't want to stand mail. online for 20 minutes because somebody doesn't know how to ring things up. I, I'm, I'm not good anymore with it. I've lost <laughs> right. all patience for the, the real world after I started buying everything online. Yeah, exactly. Amazon, they uh, never like lock their drawer and forget to give you yep. change back. That never has happened once. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. so funny. That's so funny. So what are some other takeaways? We're kind of rounding third here, but what are some other thoughts and, and things that you think would be good for our listeners to hear? 
Yeah. So if anybody is listening now and they're thinking, oh, I actually have this product idea that, that might be good for this. Um, obviously, you know, I should have mentioned this, but before you get traffic to your website, so before you use Google shopping ads, you need to find the suppliers that you want to work with. Okay. And um, one thing is like, if you go online and you go to Google and you type in dropship suppliers for whatever the product is, what you're going to find is a bunch of middlemen that typically are like distributors. And they'll say, oh, if you pay us X amount of dollars per month, you have access to our products. And those companies you'll never make money with. So mm. another tip is if you're doing research for suppliers, don't search online for dropship suppliers. Instead, search for the product category that you want to sell in, and then look for different online stores that are selling that product category. So go back to stand-up desks. I would find every stand-up desk store I could find on Google. I would go to all those websites. Then I would look for a section on those websites that either said brands or manufacturers, what brands they were selling for. And then I would reach out to those brands directly to be able to sell their products. That's really cool. Yeah. Cause I was wondering the, the process, it's kind of a lot to take on at first. If you're like, I don't know how to do this or Shopify, things like that, but you really break it down and make it easy to, uh, to understand. So to kind of recap, the first is to find a product between two hundred and a thousand dollars, and then look for the right suppliers, not just like oh, drop ship, you know, no, no middleman, like no, no one middle that calls man. themselves a drop ship supplier. Okay, that's Don't a work red with flag. Those companies. Okay, that's a red flag. And then what was the other part? The next step would be going ahead and actually, so that's when you would sign up for Shopify and you would, uh, you know, create your account, get familiar with the, the 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 system, the platform, and then once your store is set up, that's when you would go ahead and start using Google Shopping ads. Google Shopping ads, awesome! That is so cool. Well, Anton, this has been great. Thank you so much. I feel like I know a lot more now. I'm going to be doing my research to try to figure out what products I could sell because this could be uh, this could be really fun and make me some decent money, which would be always helpful. Definitely. Definitely. It's a great thing. Like, you know, I tell everybody it's, it's a real business. It's, it's real work, but it's in my opinion, one of the best businesses. If you're going to do the work, this is a great place to, uh, to invest time. That's so cool. Well, once again, if you could just promote anything you would like to share with our audience where they can learn more about your business and maybe shoot you a question or uh, uh, feedback would be great. Yeah. The, the hub of everything I do is dropshiplifestyle.com. So D R O P S H I P lifestyle.com and everything is linked up off there, uh, including how to contact me. Perfect. Anton, this has been great. Thank you so much for your time today. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Entre Nito. We'd like to invite you to visit us on the web at entrenito.com. And here's some of the neato things you can expect when you get there. As a token of our appreciation for tuning in, you can download a free audiobook. And that's thanks to our friends at Audible. You can purchase your very own super official, super comfy, and super trendy Neato t-shirt. Looking to take your life and business to the next level? You can sign up for a free coaching call. Have a question or comment for us? You can click contact and connect with us. All of this and more is waiting for you at entrenito.com. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to our show and stay current on all the amazing interviews with our Neato guests. Now take what you've learned and apply it and start living your Neato life now.